Example 3 is another one that uses geometry. A little more complicated than a sphere because a sphere only has one variable. This one has a cone which has a radius and a height which adds another layer of complexity to the problem. So, the water tank has the shape of an inverted circular cone with a base of 2 meters and a height of 4 meters. Now, I generally don't try to draw a cone, I draw a triangle instead. So, example 3, and it's inverted, that means it's sitting on its point. So we just pretend that that's a cone. And it has a base radius of 2 meters. So 2 meters and a height of 4 meters. I almost got it right down the center. That wasn't too bad. Water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of 2 cubic meters per minute. We want to know the rate at which the water level is rising when water is 3 meters deep. So, no need when. Let's don't get overwhelmed with trying to come up with an equation yet. I know the change in volume dv dt is equal to 2 cubic meters per minute. Find the rate at which water level is rising. That would be height. So dh dt, not just h. dh and my when water is 3 meters deep so when h is equal to 3 so let's relate the volume of a cone is 1 third pi r squared h oh darn it's got r's and h's in it I would really like to have a function that only has H's in it because my goal is to figure out dH dt. If my goal was dr dt, then I'd be wanting a function that only had R's in it. So what I'm going to do is look at this triangle I have here, but I'm going to look at just half of it. This triangle is 4 meters tall and 2 meters wide. Here's a radius. Here's a height. That's a similar triangle. So 2 over 4 has to be equal to R over H. So I would like to have a function that only has H's in it, so I'd like this R all by itself. So R is equal to 2 fourths times H, and that's the same thing as 1 half of H, and I'm going to just write it as H over 2. Now I can replace the R in that volume function with H over 2. 1 third pi h over 2 squared times h. Now let's simplify stuff. I have 1 third pi h squared over 4 times h. I'm just going to stick pi on the top of the fraction bar and I'll put 4 times 3 down below h cubed. Oh, wow, that's so nice and simple now. I'm ready to differentiate. So dv dt is equal to 3 falls down, pi over 4, 
h squared dh dt. Now I'm ready for when. When h is equal to 3 and dv dt is equal to 2. So evaluate. 2 has to be equal to pi over 4. h is 3, so 3 squared dh dt. So dh dt is 2 divided by 9 pi over 4, which is 8 over 9 pi, just because fractions over fractions are ugly. And this would be meters per minute. And of course, when we're writing our sentence, we would want to plug that in the calculator. So again, I'm going to use my fraction bar. 8 over 9 pi gives me about 0.283. So the height is increasing or the water level is rising at a rate of about 0 0.283 meters per minute. Easy enough. Practice 3 is different this time. Our cone has its point up. And it's filling at a rate of 45 kiloliters per second, which is one cubic meter. If the height of the tank is 100 meters and the angle the inside of the tank makes with the ground is pi over 4, how fast is the height increasing when the circumference at the water level is 50 meters? Wow, they've thrown some little issues in here. So let's draw our cone, but we're just going to draw a triangle because if I were to draw a cone, it wouldn't look that pretty. And the height of the cone is 100. We don't know the base, but we know that the angle that it makes with the ground is pi over 4. So this is pi over 4. So I need to come up with a relationship between height and radius at some point, but we're going to deal with no need and when first. No. I know the change in volume. It is 45 kiloliters per second. I need how fast is the height increasing. So I want dh dt again. But this time my win Circumference at the water level is 50 meters. So circumference equals 50 meters. Well, I know that circumference is 2 pi times the radius. So radius equals circumference over 2 pi. So my win is really when the radius is equal to 50 over 2 pi, or even better, just 25 over pi. I think that'll be a little more useful than the circumference, but you know how to get to radius from circumference because that's really easy.
relate. The volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. Again, I have two variables here. My goal is dh dt, so I need to come up with a relationship between these variables. So let's look at this triangle I have here. If this is pi over 4 and this is a right triangle, well, even though you can't tell it from my graph, this also has to be pi over 4, which means this length has to be exactly the same as that length because that's how things work. So that means that my radius is the exact same as my height. Well, that makes life easier. So now volume is just one third pi h squared h, which is one third pi h cubed. It's really easy to differentiate. Differentiate. dv dt is equal to 3 falls down, so just pi h squared dh dt. I know dv dt is 45. Well, it's when radius is equal to 25 over pi, but radius is the same thing as height, so 25 over pi squared dh dt. So 45 equals 25 squared, I think it's 625. It is, yay, I remembered. And I have pi over pi squared, that leaves me with one pi down below. So there's dh dt. So dh dt is equal to 45 over 625 pi. Let's write that in lowest terms. So 45 over 625. That would be 9 over 125. And now let's do 9 over 125 pi gives me 0 0.023. So the water level is rising at a rate of 0 0.023 meters per minute. Oh, per second. Let's see. Yes, it is per second. And it's meters because, remember, kilometer, kiloliters here is the same thing as cubic meters per second. So this is meters per second.